Let's go and go live again. Hopefully this works. Okay. So. Now we're back. We're back live. Um, so I uploaded like a 15 minute video, but I think the cell connection here is not super good. Um, right. It would be helpful to have some Starlink perhaps. Yes, um, there you go. But, Deal. Uh, uh, I'll be uploading the 15 minute video as soon as I get a good connection. Um, and uh, hopefully this uh, live stream is uh, is working uh, re reasonably well. Um, all right, well, let's just continue. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. Let's all continue. Right. Over here is the uh, Border Patrol. Border okay. Patrol. And uh, you'll see, I mean, right here under the bridge, you're seeing hundreds of people getting processed. And this is every single day. And they'll go to another soft sided facility that has thousands of people. Right now, okay. it's over 5,000 people. Uh, and, and so over here to the right, literally under a bridge, a lot of trade happens here in the city. Yeah. Okay. So it's just sort of like, a, that's, that's the bridge and there's like people getting processed and then they come across on those, those the trains over there. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, an initial intake spot and then they'll, they'll send them through, but it's nonstop okay. all day long. And if you notice all the border patrol agents, the, the number one thing that border patrol agents ask of me is to get back out in the field. They don't want to be here processing people. They want to be catching bad actors and, and they're not, you know, they're just, you've got dozens of them here. And this is probably the biggest uh, issue. If we can do that, then we keep America safe from fentanyl and opioids and some of these things that are killing all Americans. Okay. Just to go over some of the numbers that we talked about in the video that I'll upload later. Um, uh, there, there's roughly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, about two and a half million processed legals per year. Uh, of, and then it's somewhat debatable how many are, are sort of unprocessed, but maybe it's like in total, quote, maybe, maybe four or five million illegal immigrants, immigrants per year. This, this number is also uh, has reached all time highs. All time highs. All time highs. And it's continuing to increase. Yes. Um, and. Uh, Nothing, as far as you know, is being done about it at the federal level? Nothing. Things, simple things, common sense things that we can enact can, can make a difference today. Uh, simple things like raising the level of credible fear. Many people are seeking asylum, are not going to qualify I'll, for asylum. Yeah, move to where you can see, get a better, yes. I, I don't know. We can, uh, maybe like, do this way. I don't know, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, okay. okay. Yeah, so, so right now, last month, there was over 200,000 people that came over illegally. So that is, uh, you know, that's in the millions. You, you multiply that times 12, you know, here you are, two and a half million people coming over. Most of the people that are seeking asylum are not going to qualify for asylum. Nine out of 10 actually are not. So one of the things that we can do is we can raise the asylum uh, okay, criteria. So, so, uh, now, to be, now, an important point is that although, as you're saying, like basically 90% do not qualify for asylum, of the 90% that, that, do, that do not qualify for asylum, how many are sent back to the country of origin? Zero. I mean, here in this in this okay, that's Del Rio an sector, point. in Del Rio sector alone, you have twenty five hundred people coming over illegally a day, and zero sending back. Zero. Zero. Not even like a ten. Not even a, a, nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. So, what kind of signal does that send the rest of the world? Sure. Is this is where you need to come, and this is you're you're not going to be sent back. Okay, so there's basically no repercussions. No repercussions. That's what. That's the, the number one thing that this administration has to do. There has to be some repercussions. Now, it's due process. Make sure that people sure. get their day in court. That, you know, I, I've been advocating that one person that does qualify for asylum, we need to make sure that they don't get sent back to sure. certain death or anything like that. But the 9 out of 10 that don't, I mean, there has to be repercussions. And once you do that, Elon, this goes away. It, yeah. it went away for Trump, it went away for Obama, it went away for Bush, it went away for Clinton, and they're not willing to do that, and I don't understand why. Well, when you reached out to the White House, what has been, what's their response? Their response is, it is a political problem. It is not what is, a... What is politi what does that mean, they, political They problem? think it's just, you know, the Republicans are blaming the Democrats, Democrats are, 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 are blaming the Republicans. And they it's, think it's not real? Or it's not real. It's a political problem. What it, what, honestly, what's working the most is these mayors from these cities, they're all many times Democrat the mayors. Mayor of New York, in fact. Mayor of New York, very... The governor of New York as The well. governor of New York, exactly. Uh, El Paso, the, you know, the mayor of El Paso. These places, anywhere, anything that it's, this it's crisis... It's not a partisan touches, issue is what It's saying. not. It's not. It's a policy issue. Yeah. It's a policy issue. And we can be humane and we can be all these things and we can protect those that qualify for asylum. But we also need to have repercussions for people that don't. Sure. Exactly. And I mean, we're in this absurd situation where the vast majority of people are not, in fact, asylum seekers. Um, you can actually see, read on Google in any language you want. 
uh, what, what are the magic words you need to say? Yes. Uh, uh, and then you're automatically in the asylum sort of queue, uh, which takes several years before you actually see anyone. And then even if you do see one, even if you are denied, you're not deported. Exactly. And, and once you do that, all that does is attract more people to come over illegally. And uh, ultimately, it undermines those that are trying to do it legally. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine I mean, if you're... I, to be clear, like we're both in, very much in favor of... of, of expanded legal immigration. I yes. think anyone who is hardworking yes. and honest uh, should be, you know, and, and is really going to add to, the, you know, be an, a net addition to the economy. I think we should, we should let them in. Yes. Um, but, but, but I mean, what we're seeing here are, in some cases, some pretty extreme uh, individuals coming through. Sure. Um, obviously, not suggesting everyone is like this, but you're talking about, um, you know, a guy who came through uh, who had uh, face tattoos, including tears. Yes. Uh, at tattooed on his face. Yes. Um, the, the tear when, when somebody tattoos a tear, it means that they they have murdered someone. Yeah. Um, and they are so proud of the, having murdered someone that they they, they tattoo a, t- a one tear on their face for every person that they kill. Is that correct? That, that's exactly right. I mean, these are and this people, person just claimed asylum. Claimed asylum. And we just let them in. We let them in again. A ahead of- serial murderer. Exactly. Who is proud of their murders? Yes. Um, the other this is piece, insane. The other piece of it, too, is many many of these people are coming from Central and South America where culturally it is it is not acceptable to have tattoos at all, period. Right. So, so it's you a know, big deal. It's so. a big deal to have a tattoo. It's an even bigger deal to have a neck tattoo and a face tattoo. That means it's almost certain that yeah. you are culturally unacceptable wherever you came from. So there's a lot of red flags issues that are glaring. These are people that nobody should want in their in their communities. I mean, I'm talking bad actors. I'm talking people. Yeah, I, it's safe to say that if somebody is a, you know, multiple murderer and proud of yeah. it and t- tattooing it on the face, they're, they're unrepentant, yes. to say the least. Yes. Uh, it's not like they try to get the tattoo removed. Right. Um, and, um, you know, the, most likely if, the, if, the, if they were murdering people somewhere else and proud of it, they will continue in that tradition. That's exactly right. Yeah. I was in, I was in West Texas, 300 miles from the, from the border in my district. And there was a sheriff that told me a story where two folks had come over illegally okay. from Cuba, and they were working in the oil and gas industry. They're making money, sure. and they were going to go buy a truck and basically start a company of their own. And the plan was both of you put $30,000 to go buy this truck. They're friends. They come together. The one friend shows his $30,000, and the other friend murders him. Murders him, takes his money, dismembers his body. Okay. Spreads it everywhere, and, and that's a friend. I mean, you, what I'm getting well, at not is, much of, I would say that's not much <laughs> yeah, of a friend. That's know. not much of a friend. No. But you it's don't know. If you're willing to do that to somebody. It's like full like Breaking Bad situation. Exactly. You just don't know. And that's what okay. people are scared. People in, in American citizens are, are scared. They just don't feel safe. They don't know who these people are. They don't want to assume, but they also don't want to not assume. They have children. It's a safety issue. Okay, and not only is there no end in sight, but this issue is accelerating rapidly. Yes, yes, and it's getting worse. The many people that are coming over now, before they would have someone in the United States to go to, yeah. or they would have money, the folks that are coming over now are impoverished. They have no money, and they have nowhere to go. Okay. So they're trying to scrape together some money to take a bus trip to the next destination, if you will. It's a bad situation all the way around, and, and a large part of it is because the administration is attracting these folks to come, knowing full well they're not going to have any of the... It's a dead-end road that they're going down. This sounds like complete madness. It is. Okay. Imagine if you have to live it every day. <laughs> I'm like... Not only is it getting mad, it's becoming normal. That is what I worry about. Normalizing that insanity. Is, that is why you... We're living in a clown down. world here. <laughs> You I mean, coming down was so important to go. Does this look normal to you? Does any of this yeah, look yeah. normal? I well, mean, and, and the train you, that's coming across—that's that's basically where people hop, hop on top of the train and hop on top of the train. Um, and and uh, let's see. I think the sheriff was. I know the sheriff's still here, but uh, you're telling us about how they're really pretty expert at, at sort of turning the brakes on the train and stuff. Yes. And yes. So it's dialed, basically. It is. You've got you've got. Uh, real commerce mixed in with illegal traffic, and so it's just it muddies the situation for everybody. Okay. Um, How about what can we do about it? Yeah, what can we do? What about can it? we do? How does yeah, this yeah. end? 
Yeah, how, yeah, what, what, we have a government. Like, like, yeah, we, we have a crisis. We have a What's crisis. What's the recommendation? We have a government that's about to shut down, and it's going to shut down. I think there's an opportunity if we can reopen the government and there be real solutions attached with, with some border security measures in there that are nonpartisan. I'm not talking sure. really crazy stuff one way or another. I'm talking something everybody can agree on. This could be a win-win for America. We just need the right package to be crafted with some sensible things. You raise the level of cre- uh, credible fear. You you turn on the repatriation flights so at least some people that are coming over Above illegally, zero. Above good. zero would be yeah. a good start. And then the immigration judges are so critical to it. You surge immigration judges, and that way when somebody comes in, they get their case heard immediately, not seven years from now. You do that for a month, and all of a sudden the word's out, hey, the border is closed. Go through another route. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Um, hey, guys. How's it going? Hello. Hey. <laughs> so, it, I don't know if the sheriff's been obviously busy, so I don't know if they're still here or anything, or they have to go? Yeah, I oh, think they have it, to take off. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I got. I think I got them on recording. Yeah. So, all right. Um, well, what else do you think we should How do? How about some Border Patrol agents? Okay, sure. These are just, these are federal. Because that was from the, the county sent. Hey, guys. I, I don't know if, if you, are you cool being on camera at all? Oh, we're not allowed. Yeah, oh, I no, 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 camera. Okay, no, don't worry about it. Sure. Uh, sir, the camera's pointed at me, so don't worry about it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. So, all right. This is the part where a lot of folks are frustrated because they want to be working. Sure. I mean, these are they're law enforcement officers that want to be yeah. enforcing our laws, and they're not able to. Okay. Yeah. They're just not allowed to enforce laws. No. This is, uh, the, this is their new normal, and, okay. and that is not a long-term winning strategy for a positive part of the Border Patrol Customs and Border Protection. Okay. Well, it, anyone else who, who, who we think we can talk to? Um, I think we've... Or, uh, are we good? Let, let's walk a little bit further down okay. this way. Um, I think the part that, that's just, just brief... The, is this is a golf course. Okay. I mean, you know... So to the left, you have a golf course, an actual functioning golf course. Sure. And to the right, you have a processing center, a mobile okay. processing center. Um, okay. The other piece of it, too, is is the, imp- the, the the transportation. Like, how does this all work? Yeah. Well, you know, you, you got to have water. you gotta have you got to have food. you got to have, you know, vehicle, buses. All, none of that is free. Somebody has to pay for that. And who's paying for it is oftentimes the mayor or the county or Border Patrol agents or border, Customs and border, uh, border Protection is paying for buses instead of something else. Okay. So th- these people are all waiting to get processed, right? People right here. Sure. So, hey guys, <laughs> how's it going? These people, this is, I mean, this is the shot right here. Okay, this I is... Mean, look at this. These people... You see how orderly it is? Yeah, I mean, it's and actually, it, it's very orderly, so... It's it's like an orderly, chaotic, unruly event that's happening. Okay. Um, and, and it's wrong. It's wrong for everybody involved. Sure. And we're not talking one or two people. We're talking thousands of people every day. Thousands of people every day, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, well. Okay, I'm going to end the live stream now. Um,